Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Credit Chat. I'm Rod Griffin, Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. I'm here to answer your questions about credit reporting, credit scoring, fraud and ID theft, all of those things that we talk about and try to talk about every week that affect your financial health and your financial life. So I want to answer any questions you have. It's about having a conversation and sharing information with one another so that we can help each other be more successful. So Bloco03, so thanks for joining and being part of the chat. Uh, if you have a question, please feel free to ask. Don't be shy. If you have a question, I know other people do as well. And what we do with credit reports and scores is so important financially to everybody, uh, and me included. Uh, if you have credit or you use financial services, you're going to probably have a credit report, and it's going to be important in your life. So uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, Keisha Renee v VS, thanks for joining. Um, Bloco so three, what's the best credit card to build back credit? And the answer is the one that you can get that works for you. Uh, so there's no real right answer to that. There are no one specific card. Uh, if you're trying to build credit, if you don't have any credit at all, I've never had credit. Uh, and if you're trying to reestablish credit and haven't had access to accounts, it may be a secured account with your credit union or your bank. You open a savings account, they issue a credit card to you tied to that account to protect them if you don't pay them back so they can take the money out of the savings to pay charges if you don't, uh, which would still have your, your payment history reported. So after bankruptcy, yeah. So uh, so then that adds a whole different twist, right? Uh, so after bankruptcy, if uh, uh, a secured account can still be uh, a good place to, to start uh, with your bank or credit union. Uh, if you have or are going through the bankruptcy process, if you can keep an account open uh, with a small balance or a, pardon me, a small limit and zero balance, uh, or if you have a credit card that you're making the payments on or have very little um, balance on and you can maintain that account not included in the bankruptcy, make sure you don't have any debt, keep those payments on time. Uh, you make a small purchase, pay it in full so you're not taking on debt after the bankruptcy is completed. And what that will do is have that positive history for that particular account building. Uh, and you'll have the history for that growing over time after the bankruptcy that can help you get sort of a, a, a leg up to get started again. Because over time, the accounts included in bankruptcy will fall off the credit report. And even while they're there, the older they get, the less impact they have on your credit scores. If you have an account or two that you are still making those on-time payments for, they have a positive history. As the accounts included in that bankruptcy or the late payments begin to fall off, they'll be offset and replaced with that positive information. That positive information will still be there. That's going to help you reestablish your credit history a bit faster. So if you can do that, that's a good place to start. If not, you may, after bankruptcy, be stuck with you know higher interest kinds of cards uh, or uh, loans, probably not the kind of credit you want right away. If you can wait to, to open a new account or apply, you might want to for a bit. Uh, but if you're trying to reestablish, you might need a, a to apply for a higher interest card. Don't carry any balances. So don't use it to make purchases and then carry a balance from month to month. Make a small purchase, 10 or 15 or $20 every month. Pay that balance in full right away and you'll establish that history. It will be reported and you'll start building that positive history. The key is to be building a positive payment history behind that bankruptcy. Uh, and so it's going to take time. Your bankruptcy public record is the only public record that still appears in your credit report. It's going to be there uh, if it's Chapter 13 for seven years from the filing date. If it's Chapter 7, it will be there for 10 years from the filing date. That's going to be a drag on those scores that whole time. But the further in the past it occurred, the less effect it will have. And the accounts included in bankruptcy should be updated to show included in bankruptcy and any late payments in the accounts themselves will start to fall off. Uh, so as they fall off the report, you'll be able to then see that positive information backfill behind it you'll, and you'll be able to re rehabilitate your credit history essentially. Uh, so that's what that's all about. Um, so um, you know, it takes time. You know, there's no, no quick answer, uh, no, nothing you can do that, that over. So, uh, makes it difficult. Um, but it's not permanent. So don't give up either. You know, I have people tell me, you know, I just don't think I can recover it. And you can, you always can. Your credit history is not permanent and you can control re rebuilding. It just takes time, patience, getting that account or two that has that positive history and you'll get there. Cash J, thanks for joining. Um, I have a 799, uh, 14 Heydrich 88. I have a 799. It was higher 
but I had three lenders check the credit and it went down a few points. Why did it happen? It could be because of those inquiries. It could be because of something else. You know, my scores, I share them often, and uh, my scores dropped from almost 850 now down to about 813. They'll go back up again because over the holidays, I made some purchases. My balances on my my credit card were a bit higher than they usually are. That's being that's paid off now. So in the next month or two, I expect those scores to start to rebound. Your scores go up and down uh, as you use your credit. With a 799, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, you know, and with the various scores out there, I'm not sure what score you're looking at. My scores range, you know, with that FICO eight uh, in the 800s down to the high 700s on certain others on other scores uh, that if you have the Experian app and the, the premium service you can see about seven or eight different I think FICO scores uh, and they'll they'll range in, in uh, because of scale and because of what they're the risk they're measuring those sorts of things they'll differ and that's okay uh, so it's hard to say exactly what's happened but a 799 uh, you're going to walk into a, a lender no matter what it's for and they're going to go Sign up. What, what do you want? Because we'll we'll give it to you probably uh, within reason. Uh, so um, you know, could have been that you've you've uh, applied uh, when you apply for a, for credit that an inquiry will be will be posted. That rep, tongue tied today. That inquiry indicates that you've applied for new credit that doesn't show yet as an account on your report. So there's potential new debt, an unknown amount that represents some risk. Uh, very little uh, and scores can cause your uh, inquiries can cause your scores as a result to dip a bit initially that usually only lasts for a couple of months because then after that period of time there'll either be a new account so the inquiry isn't the risk indicator anymore it's that new account or there won't be a new account because you just didn't take on any new debt or any, open a new account and so the inquiry doesn't represent risk uh, so you don't have to worry about it it's just a record that someone's looked at your report uh, initially, they can have a small effect on scores. The least important factor in credit scores. I don't worry about inquiries because, like you, uh, you know, most people don't apply for a lot of credit during the year, uh, and so you'll see one or two or three maybe, uh, and you'll see scores go down. Then they'll come back up. So I would bet that will happen. Those seven ninety nine year scores will probably recover uh, over the next few months. Um, K Brand thirty one. Thanks for joining. Um, so I think I caught it. That's the one. I Trying to get to um, short sale on house is better than foreclosure. Um, marginally, a short sale, uh, the term short sale actually never appears in a credit report. The term short sale was coined to describe settling a mortgage debt for less than you owe. So it's the mortgage will be reported as settled or settled for less than originally agreed in your credit report. Anytime you settle a debt, don't repay it in full. According to the terms of the original contract, it's going to have a negative effect. So uh, a short sale will have a very negative effect on your credit scores, slightly less than a foreclosure because a foreclosure means that you went through generally a legal proceeding uh, and the house is taken back by the bank or sold uh, at auction. So, um, you know, that's uh, so it's a little uh, less. It might be the, the best alternative for you. Talk to somebody who can look at your overall credit history. Uh, and your overall financial situation, if you can avoid those kinds of situations, is better, obviously. Uh, but um, short sale, generally slightly better than foreclosure. Foreclosure, slightly better than bankruptcy. Uh, so, and But in terms of negative effect, those are probably the three worst things for your credit history. Uh, Juice V1, thanks for joining. So just having it checked lowers it. If you're applying for credit, that inquiry will be what we call a hard inquiry. So if you apply for a new account, it's the application that's important. That results in what we call a hard inquiry uh, at, because there's potentially a new account associated with it. Uh, if you are checking your own credit report, if you are uh, getting a pre-approved offer, if existing lenders are checking your report to see if perhaps they want to give you a credit limit increase, for example, a portfolio review uh, for insurance, for employment purposes, all of those, what we call soft inquiries, you're not applying for new credit, but we show a record that your report's been checked, so you have it. Those only show on your personal credit report. They don't affect credit scores. They don't affect lending decisions in any way. So be sure you understand exactly what inquiry you're looking at. When you get your Experian report, they're listed in two different sections. One says uh, inquiries shared with others, and the other will say inquiries shown only to you, or language to that effect, so you'll know exactly what you're looking at. Soft inquiries are shown only to you. They're the result of 
things like I said, getting your own report, not applications for credit. If you're applying for credit or other services, submitting an application for a new account, that's going to be a hard inquiry that can have a small impact on scores for a short time. Uh, and so, you know, that's the, the the thing to be aware of. Now, there are there are um, other things to consider with inquiries. So, for example, if you're buying a car or a house with the newest scores. They will exclude those inquiries. They'll still be in your credit report and you've applied, but that allows you to shop for the best rates and best terms for a home or a car. They recognize you're buying one car or one house. At least most people I know are. Uh, I would be. I don't, I've only had one house my whole life. And if I bought a car, which the last time I did was 10 years ago, um, you know that the, the, I would want to shop for the best rates, but I'm only buying one car. Uh, so credit scoring systems recognize that. You're going to shop for the best rates. There may be multiple inquiries. That's okay. They're only counted as one for purposes of calculating a score. Uh, so, or not counted at all with the newest scoring system. So you don't have to worry about that. And, and so be aware of that as well. Uh, Webchan6, thanks for joining. Uh, Faro 02020 thanks for joining. Um, I'm just kind of scrolling down to see if there are any questions and always glad to help if we can. Uh, again, I'm Rod Griffin. I'm Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. This is Credit Chat. I try to be here 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Wednesdays, you can join us on Twitter on our Credit Chat. And we have lots of great guests, lots of great conversation. Uh, we're, next week, we're going to talk about savings and investing. Uh, so really important this time of year to be thinking about that. And how do you start saving? How do you start investing for the future? Um, you know, we talked about how do we keep our New Year's financial resolutions last year? You know, how do we stick to our plans? How do we... Uh, achieve our goals, those sorts of things. So um, join us on Twitter on Wednesdays, 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern. You can learn more about both this Periscope and our Twitter chat at ex.pn slash credit chat. So hope to see you both. I uh, appreciate you joining. Um, Darlene A. Taylor B., thanks for join Thanks for being here and Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, Constance LVC, thanks for joining. If you have a question about credit reports or credit scores or fraud and ID theft, Please feel free to ask. I'll do my very best to answer. I think having the, the dialogue and the conversation, sharing what your concerns are, uh, is going to be helpful to a lot more people because if you have a question, others have that same question and we can help share information. That's what we want to do. Your credit report, your credit score should be financial tools. They should not be uh, financial barriers. You should be able to walk into a lender and know exactly what they're going to see and be able to walk in with confidence and use that to your advantage to get better interest rates, better terms, uh, lower fees, all of those sorts of things. Take advantage of incentives. So if you're getting a credit card and you're shopping for the best rates or the best terms or the, the kinds of um, um, incentives that you can get. So things like airline miles or discount purchases or um, points or cash back, whatever it might be, gives you choice. If you're using that credit report well and understanding how to use it, and that's what we want to do. It shouldn't be a mystery and scores shouldn't be a mystery. And that's what we want to help. And you know, we all know about identity theft and fraud, We've, whether you know it or not. And, and I, I know I have been a victim of identity theft and, and account takeover um, data breaches. So we all have been. So it's important to talk about those things, too, and what to do and how to respond. Uh, really important. So. If you have a question, please feel free to ask. It's really a, you know, it's the time of year where we're all thinking about our personal finances. How do we manage them? How do we make this a great new year and a great year for our financial goals and, and our credit? How do we improve it? How do we make sure that our, our financial tools are there to work for us so that we're more financially healthy and more able to obtain the kinds of goods and services, sources, and the resources, tools that we need to pay lower fees, save us money, uh, and and obtain the financial goals that we, we set for ourselves. So uh, understanding credit is a big piece of that. Uh, and one of the things to know uh, that if, and I haven't seen anybody ask today, but if you are interested in boosting your credit score, uh, we have a service called Experian Boost that lets you add your positive cell phone payments. So we're all watching on the cell phone, uh, probably uh, I'm talking on my cell phone. So you're paying that cell phone bill on time every month. With Experian Boost, you can actually add those positive payments to your credit report to help boost your credit scores. You can do the same with your utilities, your natural gas, water, electricity. If you pay them through a checking account or a savings account, go to Experian.com slash boost. It's a free service. It's permission-based. So if you uh, you give us permission to access your bank account to capture them, 
and then uh, pull those payments into your report as accounts. We'll go back up to 24 months. You can see an instant boost in your credit score. We'll give you a free FICO 8 score when you start the process and another one when you complete it to see what's happened with your score. We're actually seeing on average scores increase between 10 and 13 points. And for people with what we call thin files, uh, credit reports of, with fewer than five accounts, scores that increase on average 19 points. So we're seeing some really good results uh, and it lets you get credit where credit's due for paying those kinds of bills that people often ask me you know, or think that they're already reported and they weren't in the past. So um, very useful tool. Check it out. Again, it's free. If you change your mind, don't want to use it, you can say stop and we'll stop. Uh, so you're in complete control as well. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of late payments? Uh, I heard to dispute with the CFPB, they can remove up to three lates per year. Um, that's a myth. <laughs> so uh, the best way to get rid of late payments, if they're accurate, is to be patient. They're going to be on your credit report if they're reported accurately for seven years from the original delinquency date, the date the account first became delinquent. If there's just one late payment, it will be there for seven years from the date of delinquency. If you fall behind, never catch up. The account's charged off as a loss. It's sold to collections. The original account and the, sub the following collection account will be deleted seven years from the first uh, date of delinquency, what we call the original delinquency date of the original account, uh, and, will, and it will come off um, after seven years. Uh, and that's a matter of federal law. It's in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, collection agencies must report that original delinquency date. And also, as a matter of federal law, cannot change it. Uh, so um, if, you, if you believe the, the late payment is inaccurate, you should absolutely dispute it. You can dispute it with Experian. It's free to do so. Anything you believe may be inaccurate in your credit report or as a result of fraud or identity theft, any of those sorts of things, you should absolutely dispute. You can go to Experian.com slash dispute and do that. If you have a current copy of your personal credit report, you've gone to annualcreditreport.com and got your free report, for example, provide that report number and we'll pop up that free report right there on the screen through a secured system and you can just click dispute on the, the button next to each item that you need to dispute walk through the process. Very simple, very easy to do. If you don't already have a report, we'll give you a free one uh, in addition to your annual report. So it's another free report. Uh, we'll ask you for some information. And again, we'll give it to you right there on the spot. And you'll be able to go through that dispute process. Uh, but uh, the CFPB is uh, our regulator and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, and th their objective is, is to ensure information is accurate and complies with federal law. So I, I'm, I'm sure they would tell you the same thing. Um, they're not in the business of removing accurate information from credit reports. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission has said you cannot remove accurate negative information from a credit report before the time frame specified in law. So um, not my words, uh, th this, the Federal Trade Commission's. Um, so I'm not sure we heard that, uh, but that piece is a myth uh, of, of the question. So um, have Experian Boost worked? Yes, um, we're, hearing, it's re we're really hearing great response um, so, you know, getting your cell phone payments, your utility payments reported positive payments, not late ones. It, ironically, in the past, your late payment information could appear, often in collection accounts, that sort of thing. But the positive information wasn't reported. Experian Boost, our goal is to give you the ability to have that positive information reported so that you get credit for doing the right things, right? And because we have researched it extensively, we have what we call data, a data lab, and they looked at what the impact would be and is it predictive of risk uh, and found that it, it really is uh, and it's a great way to show that a person who perhaps hasn't had access to traditional credit can show that they should be a good credit risk and should be able to qualify for traditional credit. That's important because if you don't have access to a credit history, uh, you don't have credit scores uh, and that doesn't mean debt but it means having access to say a credit card uh, where you don't carry a balance, uh, but it's reported to us, it enables you to pay lower fees, uh, lower interest rates, gives you access to financial services that you otherwise wouldn't. So it's about financial health. It's about financial inclusion, helping people who perhaps didn't have access to traditional financial services have a way to gain access to those services. So uh, really important in that regard. So people with thin credit files, establishing credit for the first time, growing that credit history, becoming scorable. Um, we see that as really important. Um, good afternoon. How about unemployment over payments? Um, so uh, it, we don't show employment information in a credit report. We don't collect that information. So we don't know if you're employed or unemployed. You may see 
a employer listing in the credit report. That's actually treated as an additional identifier. It's not meant to be an employment history. And the reason for that is people, for example, if you're like me, you get a, I bought a car a truck 10 years ago uh, and I haven't had a new, anything since. So um, fortunately, I haven't changed jobs, but a lot of people within a five or seven year period could change jobs several times, maybe not apply for credit at all. And the employer listing comes to Experian from your application. So it may not be a complete listing. It would just show that uh, you've been employed by these people. When you apply for a loan or another service and they're asked, they ask you usually to list your current and previous employers, that's then used to match to your credit report as an additional identifier, not as a verification tool, not as a, an employment history, if that makes sense. So uh, we don't know uh, if you're employed or unemployed, we don't collect that information. Uh, so not sure you know, what the rest of the question, I'm not sure if I'm interpreting it properly, but um, if you're unemployed, there are remedies. Talk to your lenders, ask them uh, for help, ask them what you can do to make sure that you continue to, to pay them on time or that you manage those accounts. Uh, so QB78, great to see you. Welcome from New York City. Always great to have my uh, New York City colleagues uh, and uh Friends and viewers here, um, my I, 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 uh, pick. I have a Jennifer White who works for me. She's a New York City uh, transfer for, to Texas, so uh, she reminds me of that often, uh, <laughs> and very proud of her roots as she should be. Uh, Chocolate Girl One Twenty One from Philly. Welcome from Philadelphia. Uh, great to, to have you here too. I uh, was there last spring. Had a great Philly cheesesteak. Uh, Arliston, thanks for joining. Uh, Ivan Group, I probably said that completely wrong. Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry. Good to see you again. Um, Shade Tree 1994, will the boost score be the same on the other two bureaus? No, is the answer to that. It's an Experian service. Experian uh, boost only affects your, your credit report from Experian. Information isn't a part of our competitor's credit report. So Experian boost is, is at this time an Experian service only and will only improve your Experian credit report. Uh, Ms. ZD4, hello. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, you're late. Well, shame on you. I'm glad you're here, though. Always glad to have you. Uh, if you have questions, it's, well, it's already that late. Um, but it goes fast. So thanks for being here. TV22, thanks for joining. Uh, why creditors have to report consumers' address to credit bureaus? Uh, so it's part of our identifying uh, elements, right? So we need to know who you are. There are 220 million people with credit reports. Believe it or not, you are not the only one with your name. There are other Rod Griffins out there, for example. Uh, and so we need to know your name, your address, your current address, previous addresses, social security number, date of birth. We ask for that information. We match to all of the information that's provided to us to make sure that we're collecting and compiling the right information for you and your credit history. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't have uh, information that would belong to someone else, for example, on your credit report. So or not have information that belongs to you because we didn't match it properly. Uh, we don't just match to any single item of identity in your credit report. We match to everything that's provided. Uh, if we don't get, say, a social security number, for example, from a lender, we can still compile that credit report, still provide it. Uh, the social security number is another identifier. It's not your identity. Uh, so some people think of it that way. Can you just match my social? No, we can't. We match to all of the identifying information that's provided uh, and it's so that we have accurate information for you on your credit report and compile a complete accurate report. Uh, so that's why we need those addresses. People move and, and often these days. So making sure we have the right person is why we ask for that. Um, I heard the best way to get rid of late payments is to contact the CFPB that the bureaus can remove. They can't. Uh, and I suspect won't uh, because you can complain if there's an issue with your credit report, an inaccuracy, service issues. I, you know, I always advise you to contact us first. Get a copy of your credit report. It's free at annualcreditreport.com once a year. You can get a free report if you need to dispute and don't already have one. So get that report. Work with us first. You know, If, if there's uh, something you need to dispute, you can do it online, by telephone, or by mail. We want to make sure that information is accurate because it's important to you to help you gain access to the services you need. It's important to lenders and other businesses to help them make good decisions in terms of lending and to help give you the best rates and terms. We want to facilitate that relationship. We want to make sure our information is accurate and complete. So dispute with us if 
there's an issue, that you're right uh, to complain and uh, to file a complaint with the CFPB, uh, but they're not going to remove accurate information. They'll come back to us, say, we received a complaint. We'll probably reach out to you and say, what's happened? We want to help uh, and resolve the complaint that way. Uh, so, But the CFPB can't tell us, uh, you know, remove information if it's accurate. They're not going to do that. Um, they're going to work with us. Uh, and to help dispute and ensure the information is accurate to work with you as the consumer. Yeah, so, um, that, you know, I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. So, um, but no, I mean, it is the answer. <laughs> it's the short answer. Uh, three lights a year. Um, not, see, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. That's the first I've heard of that. Uh, so, um, that's, a, that's news to me and I probably news to the CFPB. Um, Pats are genius. I'm missing the question. Pats are genius. Um, not sure what your the question. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question completely. If statute of limitations on charge of closed accounts is passed, and the account is still on credit. Um, so that's an interesting kind of statement and question. And there's a lot of confusion about that. Uh, when you talk about the statute of limitations, uh, there are two laws that get confused. Uh, there is the Fair Credit Reporting Act that specifies how long information will remain in a credit report. And then there's uh, the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act that defines how long a, a, a debt can be collected. Two different things. Uh, so if you have a credit report uh, and the, imp the information under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, if it's negative, will remain for seven years from the original delinquency date. That's how long it's retained in a credit report. That doesn't mean that a, a uh, collection agency cannot continue to attempt to collect the debt after that period of time. The Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, along with other state laws, specify how long they can continue to try to collect. Uh, and so they may still try to collect even after it's fallen off the report, but they're two different regulations. Now, if they try to collect they, and it's come off the credit report that that original delinquency date time frame that seven years has passed, they can't put it back on the report uh, on the credit report. They can still try to collect, but it won't go back on the credit report. If they change that original delinquency date, they violated, violated federal law. Uh, they violated our policies. Uh, so we don't want that to happen. Um, so they're two different regulations. Uh, and in the industry, you often hear the phrase time barred debt. And what they're often referring to is the fact that they want to put it back on the report and they can't. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's annoying to collectors and, and for obvious reasons. But, um, you know, they, they, the, keep in mind the two different laws. I hear them confused often. Uh, so there's the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act that says how long a debt can be collected. There's the Fair Credit Reporting Act that says how long it will stay on the report. And they're two different time frames. Uh, and in some states, they have shorter time frames for information staying on a report. Like New York, I believe, is five years for a late payment instead of seven. Uh, so it may fall off and, and the time frame to collect may be shorter. Uh, so don't confuse the two laws. So when I hear statute of limitations, it's usually referring to the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act law about collecting, not the Fair Credit Reporting Act that affects my company and our business uh, in terms of how long it stays on the report. Uh, so um, one of those things that, that pops up from time to time. Uh, and I do talk to attorneys who want to know about this whole time bar debt thing that they don't like. <laughs> and I tell them, that, you know, it's the law. I, that's all I can tell you. Um, you know, the, it specifies the original delinquency, it comes off the report, and that's that. Um, they can continue to try to collect, but it's not going to come back on the credit report. Uh, so, B-Boy, great. Thanks for joining. Raven7116, thanks for being here. 30 minutes go so fast uh, when we have great questions and, and uh, the conversations we have. It's great to see everybody. Um, Chad Taylor, 8, Pats or Genius? I'm not sure. Gene Pats or, uh, or Gino? Mm, that's a football reference. Um, Patriots are out. Uh, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. That's where I'm from originally. So they're still in. So I'm rooting for Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs. So go Chiefs uh, this week. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Kansas University graduate. So football season mercifully ended. We have a new coach uh, who's working on it. We had one more win this year than we have, but basketball season is underway. So that's what um, my background is. I'm a basketball, college basketball guy. Uh, so that's more than you care to know about me, but uh, rooting for the Chiefs. Um, 
if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. We have a couple more minutes. Uh, just hit right at 30 minutes. Mindy, me, thank too. Thanks for joining. If you're just jumping in, I'm Rod Griffin. I'm Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. This is Credit Chat. I try to be here 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays to answer your questions about credit reports and credit scores and fraud and identity theft. We're here on Wednesdays on Twitter. Not here. We're on Twitter on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern. Uh, and have great conversations about personal finance issues with lots of great experts. Uh, and you can join us there. You can learn more at ex.pn slash credit chat. Uh, what's the best way to clean out bad credit? So we'll stop there. B-Boy, great. We'll take that as the last question. Uh, and, you know, it's really about time and patience and commitment. Uh, and so it's like that New Year's resolution that has to continue year after year. Uh, if you've had credit issues. It doesn't mean you're stuck with them forever. That's the first thing to always remember. If you have late payments, they do eventually come off the credit report. If you have accounts that have been charged off, they will fall off. The collection accounts will come off. The key is two things. One, you need to catch up on any late payments if you have open active accounts. Bring those accounts current. The second thing to do is reduce your debts, particularly on credit cards. If you can reduce your credit card uh, balances, those two things are going to help your credit scores the most and help restore that credit history faster. So catch up on late payments. Make sure you make those payments on time every single time going forward and then reduce and pay off your credit card balances, reducing that what we call utilization rate. Your balance to limit ratio is really important. And you know, if you're like me and math's not your strong suit, your balance to limit ratio, your utilization rate is really simple. Just add up all of your balances on all of your credit cards add up all of your, your credit limits for those cards and then divide the total of the balances by the total for the limits and you get your utilization rate. You want that to be as low as possible. Zero is the best. So if you can pay it in full each month, but uh, you definitely want to keep it as low as possible. Below 30% is kind of the rule of thumb for when it reaches a tipping point. Any balance could have a negative effect, but once you hit that 30% point, it drops, your scores will drop faster because it's a it's sort of a, an inflection point where it indicates much greater risk. So uh, keeping those balances as low as possible is the best thing you can do. And then it's time uh, because credit scores look at your behavior over time, not just did you catch up and are you current today and are your balances low today, but were they yesterday and are they, will they be tomorrow and, and in the future? So time is perhaps the most important factor and it takes time to recover, but you can do it and you can get there. Uh, it's just a matter of Patience, persistence, consistency, uh, kind of boring, really. <laughs> this credit is kind of a boring thing when you're doing it right. If you're paying that bill on time every time. You're not taking on too much debt. You're making sure you're managing it well. Um, and over time, you know, it, it's going to, it will improve. Uh, but there's no quick fix. Uh, you're paying off those debts if you can. is going to help. Reducing those balances is going to help. Uh, but then it's just time. Uh, so thank you all so much for a really fast 30 minutes. I hope to see you again next Tuesday again, uh, on, and then Wednesday and Thursday. I love Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my favorite days of the week. But I'm Rod Griffin, Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. If you're just jumping in and you're in time for me to sign off. But thank you for being here. Uh, this is Credit Chat. I hope to see you next Tuesday. And then on our Credit Chat next Wednesday, we're going to talk about saving and investing, which really should be interesting. You can learn more at ex.pn slash credit. Uh, try that again, ex pn slash credit chat uh, and hope to see you there thank you everybody for joining have a great rest of your day and a great weekend i'll talk to you all very soon